Hello everyone. Today we're looking at Ethernaut level 3, which is coin flip, and we're going to see how to hack this contract. This is a coin flipping game where we need to build up our winning streak by guessing the outcome of a coin flip. To complete this level, you'll need to use your psychic abilities to guess the correct outcome 10 times in a row. All right. So, taking a look at the contract, you know, it's a contract named coin flip. Um, there's this variable consecutive wins, which is initially set to zero, and I'm guessing it increases every time we guess correctly. And then there's some things, last hash and a factor, which is like a really long number. So it has only one other function other than that. It's called flip, which takes in a Boolean uh, guess, right? And we need to provide it either true or false. So that's kind of like heads or tails. And the way it works is it, first of all, it gets the block value, which is the numeric representation of the hash of the last block. So the last block is block dot number minus one. We get the hash of that block and we convert it to a numeric value. And then we check if the last hash is equal to equal to block value, we revert and we fail the transaction. So last hash will initially start off at zero because it has not been initialized. And then if last hash equals block value, it will revert. What this means is we cannot call this function multiple times in the same block. Because let's say you're at block number 10 and you call this function the first time, it will work. And then the second time you call it, uh, last hash will be equal to block value because it got updated the first time you called it and the function will fail. So that's one thing to note that we need to call this function um, 10 times in 10 different blocks for it to work properly and not fail. So that's what this code is kind of doing and then it updates last hash to block value and then the way it checks the coin flip is it takes the block value and it divides it by factor which is this really long number and it checks that if the coin flip equals one if this value equals one then side equals true otherwise side equals false and then finally we check if side is equal to guess, then we win, otherwise we fail and consecutive wins gets reset to zero. So since Solidity, again, Solidity doesn't have floating point numbers, it doesn't deal with decimals, you can't have numbers like 0 0.367, it can only, when we divide block value by factor, it's going to be rounded and maybe it rounds down to zero if block value is smaller than factor or maybe it gets rounded to one if it's like close to factor but not quite equal to two times factor right so it'll always be a whole number and if it's a one then side equals true otherwise side equals false so first of all let's get a new instance and let confirm and let's wait for this to be mined all right, now that this has been uh, mined, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, copy this entire contract and I'm going to go into Remix and create a new file called attackcoinflip.sol, name it whatever you want. And I'm going to paste, uh, paste that code over here, okay? And we are going to create a new contract we'll call it attack and in here we will call the flip function on coin flip multiple times and get the correct answer every single time so to do that let's first declare uh, a reference to the contract so we'll say coin flip flip equals coin flip at the address that we have so when we deployed the instance, it gave us the contract address. So I'm going to copy this and put that in here. So we have a reference to this contract and I'll just create a function attack, which is public and returns. Oh, it doesn't need to return anything. So what we need to do here is we need to 
calculate all of these things the exact same way, right? So we need to calculate block value. Then we don't really care about last hash and this stuff. We need to calculate coin flip equals block value by a factor, uh, which means we need the value of factor in here, right? And then we need to calculate the side if it is what true or false. Once we have this value, we can just do coin, uh, sorry, flip dot flip and send it the correct answer. Um, now you might be wondering why we just don't do this in a loop because it needs to be done 10 times. But the problem is because of this last hash thing, we can't do it all in the same block. So we do need to manually call the attack function 10 times. So it goes in 10 different blocks. And the reason it works is because when we call this attack function and then it further calls the flip function, this entire transaction happens in the same block, right? The transactions are atomic on Ethereum, which means either everything happens or nothing happens. So in the case that everything happens, all of this takes place in the same block, which means the random value, uh, the randomness we depend on to calculate the value of side is going to be the same in this function as well as this function because the input of the randomness is the exact same. So what I'm going to do is now just head on over to the compiler, compile this file and, oh, looks like I got rid of the comments there and compile this file. And I seem to be missing a bracket somewhere. Yes. I don't know why I didn't copy properly. Okay. So compile this file and then we'll head on over to the deployment tab and change the environment to injected provider MetaMask. And this will connect to our MetaMask. So we're on the Gurley test network, right? On the Gurley test network, I'm just going to deploy this. And we will wait for this to confirm. Note that we need to deploy the attack contract. Don't accidentally deploy coin flip. You need to deploy the attack contract. Once that has been deployed, uh, we can go check it out. And just to make sure, you know, I'll show you. If we do await contract dot consecutive wins, initially, actually, uh, let me do this from way because this is a UN256 await contract dot consecutive wins. Initially, it's at zero, right? So I'm going to go ahead and call attack once the first time. Hit confirm and wait for this to be mined. All right, now that this has mined, let me go back and run this function again. And you'll see it is now one. It shows up like this because, you know, the from way function is treating it like it's in way. Um, so when it converts like one way to eat, it shows up with 17 zero in front of it, but really the value of it, you know, it's one. So we just do this nine more times. We keep doing this. I'm going to fast forward this section of the video. You keep doing this nine more times. Awesome. So we've now done it 10 times. I had to do a little more than 10 transactions because I accidentally sent them too quickly and some of them got included in the same block and the transaction reverted because of that reason. But regardless, this reversion doesn't change the value of consecutive wins. So I just did it a few more times and now we are at 10 consecutive wins. So I'm going to go ahead and submit the instance at this point and you will see that it succeeds. So let's wait for this to be mined. Awesome. So it mined successfully and let's see, we have passed, passed this level. So this entire problem is really a sales pitch for something like Chainlink VRF or other sort of randomness, um, randomness services you can use like Randau or Acolyze BTC Relay, et cetera because on-chain randomness by itself doesn't really exist. It's pseudo-randomness, which means it's predictable. And while it may look random, other folks on the blockchain can predict it ahead of time. 
So if you're building something that requires true randomness, need to use an external solution, kind of like Chainlink. If you haven't already, there is a video I have up on the channel on how to use Chainlink VR app to build a secure coin flip game. You can go check that out. But yeah, that's it for this level. I shall see you in the next one, which is going to be Telephone. Cheers.